data representation. We've had enough fun playing with the numbers. Now let's look at some data types. So the first one we're going to be looking at is text. So we need to be able to represent the alphabet um, using binary numbers. So what we're going to do, um, you've got to sort of start a task here. How many different letters could you represent with four bits? So, and then how many bits do you need to represent the English alphabet? So the English alphabet has 26 characters, so you need at least 26 possibilities with your bits. Um, so with four bits, you can have two to have 16 different combinations, so two to the power of four, and that's generally how you would work that out. Um, you would need five bits to give yourself 32 combinations. Um, which we would need to represent 26 letters. Obviously, you have some wasted representations there, um, but we're not going to stick with that simple scheme anyway. But yeah, you could allocate A to all zeros, B to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, um, C to 2, etc. So then you've got lowercase versus uppercase. There's the numerical digits, punctuation, um, and characters from other languages, so uh, like where you've got little curly C's and umlauts and things like that, uh, we need to be able to represent those as well. So we need a lot more than five bits to represent text, and there are a couple of schemes we're going to look at. So uh, today we're going to be talking about ASCII and the limits of ASCII. Um, explain what a character set is. So this is a concept that uh, you need to be really happy with. What, what do we mean by a character set and the need for Unicode? Um, so ASCII and Unicode are the sort of two schemes we're going to be looking at. And calculating the number of bits needed to store a piece of text based on it using uh, ASCII or some particular scheme. So this is where the number stuff is really going to be rep uh, required. So the thing with representing text is we represent text like we represent everything. We use binary numbers. Um, so images are stored as binary numbers, sound is stored as binary. Um, everything that we store is represented as binary numbers and we just need some sort of scheme that gets us from one to the other. So in text, numbers are used to represent letters and then the numbers are stored. Um, so let's have a look at text. So I'm going to kind of jump through how text messages were sent before we had computers. Like you've seen things like semaphore and Morse code and, and all that kind of stuff. But we're essentially coding letters into alternative formats so they can be transmitted using means that we have available. So Morse code for like flicking a light on and off, um, that kind of thing. Um, so ASCII was the first mainstream scheme for using for representing text with numbers. Um, and it's been around for like 50 years or 60 years actually, if it's created in the 60s, getting there. Um, and it was used on the web until about 2008 when it was replaced by Unicode. And here are some examples of ASCII. So uh, you've got decimal numbers, then the hex version of the same number, then the binary version of the same number, and then the character it represents. So the decimal 65 represents the letter A or hexadecimal 41 represents the character A. And you can see each of the numerical representations and then the character. Now that's capital A specifically. So if you needed to work out what number represented F, you could kind of count that out in your hands, maybe pause it and try that out and guess what decimal number represents F. And it's 70. So D is 68, E is 69, F is 70. What binary number represents D? So you would just need to add one to that value we've got for C there, and I think you'd end up with 0100100. Zero, 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 zero. Yep, um, so yeah, there we go. So this here is a table of ASCII characters. Um, and let's have a look. And yeah, there are obviously some missing values. So the decimal value 0 to 31, we're not really going to be worrying about that. Just look at those. Those are the printable characters that can be represented. And um, the colours are there just to kind of help your eye guide around the table. And we're going to have a look at the worksheet for activity one. So here is activity one, representing text with ASCII. There is the table. Encode your name in ASCII. So if I did mine, uh, I could do my first name. So then the J, I need, I guess we should do capital letter, right? So if I do uh, 74, no, 
74 and uh, O, so I need lowercase O, which is 111. I've got to try and make sure I'm plucking consistently from the decimal. That would be a very easy mistake to make, wouldn't it? Um, and then E, lowercase E, is 101. So that would be mine. And just do yours. If you've got an extravagantly long name, just pick your short version. Then you've got a decoded an ASCII message to decode. So here are the numbers, and these are clearly in decimal because you've got like three digit character, uh, three digit ones. So all the hex ones are fit into two digits. So these are decimal numbers. Just decode the message. Right. Oh, let's jump over that. I'm sure you'll get there. <laughs> um, so ASCII includes character codes. Um, yeah, so it has all the character codes that we know we need to print, but the characters 0 to 31 um, are for kind of non-printable things, and um, it came out of teleprinters, so some of these things aren't used anymore. Um, but some of them kind of are. So... Um, those are the other characters. So it does use all the representations um, in seven bits. So all the different values you can use with seven bits uh, are covered there. Okay, so ASCII is an example of a character set. Now a set in maths is a set is a uh, is a series of values that where there aren't any duplicates and they don't kind of have to be in any specific order. So um, and actually in computer science, if you're doing data structures, a set is you have a, a, a collection of items. They're all unique. They don't have to be in a particular order. You could have like the names of um, I don't know the, the students in a room. There's like a set of them. There are no duplicates of a student. Or I mean, days of the week. They obviously do have a fairly sensible order, but they're all kind of unique. Um, and so a character set is a set of characters that we've decided to represent. Um, and there aren't any repetitions, so there's only one way to represent each character. Um, there's only an ordering insofar as they're represented by numbers, which have a natural ordering, but that isn't really necessary. Um, and so it's a set of characters that we are going to... and a numerical code system that can be recognised. ASCII uses seven bits. So the question is, how many different characters can it be used to represent? So think carefully. And it's 128. So you have to be careful when you're looking at like how many different combinations and what is the minimum and maximum. It's 128, which is 2 to the power of 7. But 0 is a representation, so the values are 0 to 127. Um, so what is missing from the ASCII table that you have seen? So there are no special characters in 7-bit ASCII. It wasn't there. Um, we didn't. There's no emojis or any of the like umlauts or accents or anything like that. So there's no special characters in 7-bit ASCII. Um, so ASCII was extended um, into Unicode, and Unicode is kind of now the de facto standard. So if we go to this website, you can actually see. Uh, and then kind of go into any of these. It's obviously a lot more complicated in terms of the binary representation, but it kind of boils down to the same thing. ASCII is essentially a subset of Unicode, um, and so this spec has a complete kind of detailing of it. Um, so there's, there's musical symbols, there's all sorts of stuff that can now be represented. And each of those characters, each of the emojis, each of the currency symbols, they're just allocated a numerical code, and that's Unicode. Much, much more expansive. Um, so Unicode uses up to four bytes per character. And at the moment it has character codes for 138,000 different characters, but four bytes is 32 bits. So you have many, many more representations that essentially are unused. Unicode is an extension of ASCII, so ASCII the ASCII values are just inside Unicode, and then they just added all these other values. So the first 256 codes are just the same as ASCII, uh, which essentially means they're backwards compatible. Um, and that's why we made that. Well, I didn't do it, but that's why Unicode is an extension. It's backwards compatible. So now you're going to look at um, text representation in Activity 3 worksheet. So create a text document using a text editor. And maybe I do something like this. Uh, the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. And count the characters, right? So I don't know, it's probably about 30 or something. Can I predict the file size? 
So if it's going to be ASCII, it's going to be a byte per character um, because extended ASCII is 8 bits. So it doesn't say that in here, but extended ASCII is 8 bits per character with 256 representations. And that's probably, if I made a text file, how that would be saved. If I start putting other characters, I think the formatter would detect that and start kind of adding more data as appropriate. So count the characters, predict the file size, and then look at the file size on the operating system and have a look. What is the relationship between the number of characters in a text file and its file size? So there's obviously some sort of multiplication going on there, but it might be a little bit more complicated. So then once you've done that, actually, you can take your text file, so I need to actually undo this, and let's view it in this hexed tool. Um, so I've got this, I'm gonna literally uh, dump that, if I dump it in here on this bit, is it going to do that? Insert the data at the current position. Oh yeah, I can just copy and paste. There we go. And on the le in the middle here, this is the hexadecimal representation uh, of ASCII. So actually, if I make that an A instead, um, then A is, I need capital A. Capital A is 41. So that's in hexadecimal, yes. Um, 65 in decimal. Now that is gets really confusing really quickly because lowercase a is hex 61, which is like... Um, decimal 90 something. So um, anyway, I can put the text in there and this is the representation. So this is, but this isn't even what's stored on the computer. What's stored on the computer is the binary of this. And we talked about how those readily map from one to the other. So have a look through there. Um, so this one, actually it's gonna give you the size uh, of things as you kind of click along here. Um, so now complete task two. So open your text file in that website and um, let's have a look at task two. Yep, so that's this one, yep. Yeah. Task two, then task three, how many bytes would it be used to store these numbers instead of these numbers of characters in ASCII? 16-bit Unicode and 32-bit Unicode. So really they just need to be doing the maths on uh, the number of bytes. So remember there are eight bits in a byte. Um, right. So if you are asked about file size, you just have to be able to do those math. It's all multiples of two, multiples of eight. It's fairly simple, but it's easy to get in a pickle with it. So if you've got 16 bit Unicode, that's two bytes per character. Um, right, so um, if you want to see the file size, you probably know how to do right click and uh, look at the properties of a file and it will show you how many bytes. Now this is a docx, which means it's likely to be very much bigger because there's all sorts of other stuff in there. Um, like this file only contains the alphabet and it takes many more characters because Word puts all sorts of other stuff. There's header, data, header stuff, there's metadata, all the formatting and everything. Um, if you do a plain text file, even that will still be bigger just because you can't necessarily store exactly the right file size on a hard disk because of the way that they're allocated. So the file size will always be kind of bigger, um, but you should be able to estimate it based on the number of characters. So um, why is it important to agree a standard coding system? I mean, I, I, I feel like that's kind of obvious, like if you if you don't, and you try and send someone data, they're not going to be able to read it. So that's why we have to have that. Um, and without one, yeah, so ASCII had to be kind of internationalized. Unicode is then the de facto international standard. If you don't have that, people are using different standards. They just can't communicate. Or they have to do some interworking, which is just pointless. So now have a look at the homework, which is here. You've got a resource, which is the ASCII table for the homework, um, which you can look at. And you just need to take, so you've got some Unicode characters. So has this got Unicode in there as well? Oh yeah, okay, so it's got quite a lot in there. So you should be able to use that resource to convert this into uh, something. It's got a link to that chart if you want to open it that way. How many bytes? So two hexadecimal digits make is two nibbles, that's a byte. So that's uh, two bytes, two bytes, two bytes, count them up. Convert the last two hexadecimal numbers into binary and the answer should occupy 16 bits. That's essentially a recap of the number conversion stuff. Uh, there's, there's the first byte and there's the second byte. And um, that's, I think, it. So we looked at ASCII, we looked at character sets, we looked at Unicode, and we used this tool to kind of actually interact and see how that conversion happens.